الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والتوحيد الحمد لله على الذي أتم النعمة وأكمل الدين الحمد لله على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين الرحمة المهداة سيد الأولين والآخرين وخاتم الرسل والنبيين سيدنا محمد النبي الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى الصحابة أجمعين وعلى التابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم واجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين This is our uh, weekly uh, real issues real issues meeting that we uh, have every week on Friday and we're still talking about building a community I hope inshallah ta'ala uh, this week or the coming week at the late at the latest we will uh, wrap up this subject and uh, uh, you know start a new one uh, but before I start there are some comments and questions that I want to share with you there is first basically a summary here that came to me from sister Ziva's phone it says community uh, is not a structure neither it is one a one-time job that reaches completion and can be called a finished product building a community is an ongoing project it needs consistent reminders continuous updates several warnings and uh, inflow of information to keep the community members safe and uh, help them grow learn and develop with time new policies are made older or old policies are reformed and social economic and community issues are cautiously or continuously solved resolved and dissolved in our islamic society we need to abide by the islamic ideology and teachings hence we need to keep and preserve these values by constantly reminding ourselves and each other like it is said reminders benefit believers also we need to assure that we do not cross these boundaries and limitations islamic center of south florida's real issues is about retaining uh, and our islamic retaining our islamic values and growing as a community that practices unity equality and discipline join us every friday for one hour uh, long interactive discussion inshallah thank you Sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward, reward you for this beautiful uh, uh, summary. By the way, today is the 13th of Rabi'u al-Awwal. Yesterday was the 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal. And uh, uh, that happens to be the birthday of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam was born, according to most uh, scholars, on the 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal. In what is known as Amul Fil, the year that Abraha, the uh, Yemeni king, you know, he's an Abyssinian king who ruled uh, Yemen, uh, it came to destroy the Kaaba. On 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal, that year, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was born, and it was, uh, it was a Monday. Again, just a reminder, we do not celebrate the birthday of the Prophet alayhi salatu was with any form of ibadah. There is no special dua that you do. There is no special prayers. There is no fasting, you know, on uh, uh, that day. But it's good to remind ourselves of the akhlaq of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and to read the seerah, you know, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam uh, uh, to remind ourselves of his sunnah alayhi salatu was salam. Also in this occasion, I remind you that uh, we have to defend our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam against those who are deliberately and constantly uh, uh, trying to distort the image of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, like the French newspaper or magazine that continuously keeps publishing uh, distorted uh, caricatures, basically, of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, portraying him as a terrorist or somebody who is evil and bent on uh, destruction and other things like that. Your brothers and sisters all over the world have started a boycott to boycott the French products to put pressure on the French government to outlaw such a disgrace. They call this freedom of speech. I don't know what's the freedom of speech to uh, insult a prophet and a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, if you freedom of speech to say that you do not believe in him, that's fine. You don't have to, you know, uh, uh, but to mock him and to uh, uh, use insulting words or insulting images, that's not freedom of speech. That's harming other people's 
feelings. There are two billion people, uh, two billion Muslims who revere the Prophet والسلام, and who hold him dearer to them than themselves and their families. So to deliberately uh, harm their feelings should not be considered freedom of uh, speech, what should be considered a crime. And that is why many uh, acts of hate uh, have been branded as criminal, even in France itself. You cannot say anything against Jews, you know, for example, you cannot say anything against women, it's considered sexist. Uh, but it's okay to say whatever you want against Muslims, you know, and to depict the Prophet والسلام, in the images uh, that they have, uh, uh, they have done. طيب. Uh, also, I have uh, an announcement here uh, to make that inshallah ta'ala Islamic Center of South Florida, please join us for an interactive session on premarital counseling. Premarital counseling. Those who are interested in marriage or those who are in the age of marriage, you can join us in an interactive premarital uh, uh, counseling with Sheikh Hassan and Dr. Nihad. Uh, on Saturday, November 7, 2020, at 7 uh, p.m. So this is on Saturday, November 7, uh, 2020, at 7 uh, p.m. CDC guidelines and masjid rules will apply. So make sure that you wear your mask and you bring your uh, prayers, uh, prayers, rugs, prayers rugs. I've got also a couple of uh, comments uh, from some of the viewers uh, on the last on the last program that we had. Okay, I have one comment here. How can one build a community? There's no one who can build a community. We as a group are trying to build our community, but there is no one who can say the magic word and then you know, the community will come into being. This is, this is not like building a house. You know, This is like uh, the letter said earlier, this is an ongoing process in order to make people more aware of the importance of being together and cooperation between the members of our community. But uh, it says here, how can one build a community when women and children are not uh, allowed yet to come? I guess they mean to the masjid. It is true that in the last uh, meeting of the imams of South Florida, some recommendations were adopted in line with the CDC guidelines. And in order to limit the number you know, of people who come to uh, different masjid, there were some decisions that uh, were made, one of them was to uh, allow only men because the prayers in the masjid is basically for men originally. Women do not have to. Women, if they pray in their homes, they will get more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than if they pray uh, uh, in the masjid. So they decided to uh, uh, allow only men and not any man, but men who are healthy and men who are young as well. Older men are also are exempted from coming. Children are also uh, exempted from coming. Now, this is not something that we did because we like to prevent people from coming to the masjid. We'd like, we'd love to see uh, people coming. But this is the whole topic we're talking about in building a community, like you said. But uh, this is something beyond uh, beyond our ability. Uh, we have to uh, try to limit the capacity, I think, to 30% or 40% you know, of the number of people that we can take. We can take about 180, 200 people inside and, you know, and outside. If you, if we allow everybody to come, you know, we'll not be able to deal with the, uh, uh, with the numbers. But inshallah ta'ala, I hope that soon this epidemic will be over and we'll go back to uh, normal, inshallah. Uh, I think there's a part of it also says, uh, remember the saying out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> I guess if, uh, that is true that if you do not come to the masjid for a long time, you might forget the jama'ah and might forget the masjid and the group. Uh, another comment here says, this was my answer, Salam. we are blessed to be able to communicate with Zoom. There is a lot to share and think about and learn. Thank you and barakallah feek. 
I guess this is all here uh, that we have. Yes, this is all the messages uh, that we have. Regarding the premarital uh, announcement, you know, uh, session that we are going to have on November 7th, some sister uh, brought to my attention an, a problem, a real problem that we have in our community. And that is Muslim girls marrying between two brackets because that marriage Islamically is not valid and it should not be even called marriage. But there are some Muslim women who marry non-Muslim uh, uh, men. Uh, this has happened in the past. It's, it's nothing, uh, nothing new. That marriage, by the way, like I said, is invalid. And the relationship basically is an adulterous relationship that these people are living in sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if the uh, 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 believing women come to you migrating you know, from Mecca at that time, فَمْتَحِنُوهُنْ Test them. If you find that they are believers, do not return them to their mushrik husbands because they are not allowed for them, nor they are allowed for them. Men, Muslim women are not allowed for non-Muslim men, nor non-Muslim men allowed for Muslim, uh, 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 Muslim women. And there is a story of one of the Sahabi women, her name was Umm Kulthum, that the Prophet والسلام, she came, she migrated to Medina. And uh, um, she was a Muslim, of course, and her husband demanded her return. And the Prophet والسلام, uh, would not allow her to go back because she's a Muslim and her husband was not a Muslim. There is no difference, by the way, between Ahlul Kitab or non Ahlul Kitab, Christians and Jews, or Buddhists and Hindus. A Muslim woman is allowed to marry a Muslim man only, only. So uh, the analogy that, well, why uh, uh, are Muslim men allowed to marry Christian women and Jewish women? So that does not make the Jewish women and Christian women believers. It just means that Allah has given or made this exemption that Muslim men are allowed to marry Christian women, even though they are mushrik, and to marry uh, uh, Jewish uh, women, even though they are kuffar, they're mushrik. But this is an exception that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, has made. So there is no analogy, you know, to draw uh, to draw here. And I think these are ideas of the this new modern uh, feminist, you know, uh, movement. Uh, they're trying to find equality, as they say, uh, between them and uh, men and everything, including this matter. Usually I tell people, somebody makes a sin and admits that they have made a sin and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them their sins is much better than somebody who makes a sin and he wants to twist the ayahs and the hadith and to twist the religion in order to see to suit their desires. Now you made an invalid move. You have committed something that is prohibited, something that is a major sin and you're living with what you call your husband's is sin. Instead of repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and admitting that you have done something wrong and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, you want to distort the religion of Islam and to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things that you think you know and he doesn't. There is no more arrogance, you know, than the attitude of people who are like that, people who want, who think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should follow their, his, their desires because they know better than him. You know, this is the only logic, you know, behind uh, uh, such a thing. Muslim women are not allowed to marry non-Muslim Men. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَبِيلًا That a non-Muslim should not have authority over a Muslim. And a woman is supposed to be under the authority of her husband. If her husband is a non-Muslim, it's haram for her to be under, uh, 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 under his authority. I just wanted, to, you know, uh, again to clarify that because it was uh, brought to my attention. And I think even though it is not uh, a trend that you hear about every day, but it is happening. And I know of some cases, you know, that uh, uh, such a thing has happened. Right, going back to uh, building a community, we were uh, talking about different suggestions that you have on how to initiate programs and activities and things that will help us build our community and bring people together. I have been thinking personally over the years about some of these activities and, and things that I would like to see uh, uh, in our community. There have been many suggest suggestions that were made throughout the years, I remember, in order to bond Muslims together uh, when it comes to, uh, for example, establishing some uh, consumer uh, power, you know, where we, instead, instead of you buying your grocery on your own and me buying my groceries on my own that we can combine, 
you know, for example, and form a power of buying that will save all of us money because when you buy wholesale, it should be cheaper, you know, than uh, uh, buying uh, as an individual or some uh, doing some um, financial or economical uh, ventures together, like forming partnerships and forming, you know, uh, uh, corporations. And there are many who suggested. I personally, to be honest with you, do not like to see the masjid and do not like to see the relationship between the members of our community turn into a financial uh, relationship. And I don't know, for some reason, whenever money is in the middle, you know, and all kinds of uh, problems and all kinds of conflicts, you know, erupt among people. I'd like to see that they have the, uh, the interest that uh, brings them together is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the need to, uh, uh, you know, to be uh, together for uh, higher principles and moral principles and reasons rather than, you know, financial uh, reasons or things that have to do with the financial interest. Um, another uh, thing on the social uh, level that we have certain segments of our community that are suffering. Uh, uh, basically, the older generations, they suffer from generation gap. Those who are senior citizens, those who are in their late 60s and their 70s and in their 80s, in many cases, they are sitting home and they're doing nothing and they hardly have uh, a life simply because uh, the way that the society is organized here and because of uh, uh, individualism uh, they feel that they do not have a place unless they are together with each other that is why you find certain developments and certain uh, places that will uh, uh, allow only senior citizens you know to reside and they you know in them and they provide them with uh, certain services and things like that i was thinking that we can form some sort of a club or some sort of a group, you know, for our senior citizens where they can come to the center here uh, on certain days, a couple of times a week, three times a week, one time a week, you know, where they can sit down and meet and ask about one another, nothing serious. Even if they just drink coffee or tea and they ask about one another, that in itself is uh, an accomplishment. Later on, they can develop, for example, they can start organizing uh, cultural activities, uh, learning activities, whatever they want to. Unfortunately, we understand retirement wrong. <laughs> we think that once you retire, it means that you sit home and do, and do nothing, and you enjoy doing nothing. Doing nothing is not something to enjoy. That is something to feel uh, uh, bad about it. If you are sitting home and you're doing nothing, you don't have any goals in life anymore, you might as well be dead. You're always supposed to be in a struggle. You're always supposed to be in a process of achieving something. You're always supposed to have certain goals, no matter how little you know these uh, uh, goals are. But that's what makes life uh, a life. And for these people, just to sit down waiting for death, you know, to take them one by one, is not the right attitude. If you look at other communities, you'll find that their senior citizens way more active than us. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I've been to many lectures that I was invited to explain Islam or to talk about the Middle East situation or things like that. And most of the um, uh, invitations came from senior citizens group. And they uh, organize, you know, these events. They have their weekly meetings, their monthly meetings, and they, you know, come up with ideas to educate themselves and all of that. This is an activity that, that I would like to see. And by the way, when I see, say I would like to see, I'm asking those who are in that age category, if you can initiate. All it needs is one or two enthusiastic people who will pick up the idea and who will start working for it. You know, making flyers, communicating, you know, with uh, people, organizing, you know, or organizing the effect. I'm not just talking about these things to talk about them. But if you are in, in that category, if you are a senior citizen and you are listening to me, Pick up the initiative to do that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you a lot. If you bring people to the masjid for prayers, if you make people ask about, you know, each other, every time somebody says, Assalamu alaikum to somebody, you will have the reward, you know, for uh, that. Because you started, you know, such a good, uh, 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 a good effort. So here we have <clears throat> one example, you know, of uh, a social club for, uh, uh, for senior uh, senior senior citizens, uh, the other idea that I had for a long time, and I have tried it at one point, 
the uh, senior citizen I tried a couple of times and we had a small gatherings that went on for three or four weeks, but then they stopped, you know, for some reason. But I started at one point the professional club, if you will, or union of, of Muslim professionals. Those Muslims who are in a certain field or those who are professionals like accountants, uh, doctors, uh, uh, engineers, teachers, you know, those who have certain professions to form some sort of a union, some sort of a group that will uh, uh, give them the place to meet and will uh, give them the opportunity to talk to one another, to benefit from the experience of uh, one another, and maybe even to help, you know, one another in finding jobs for those who are looking for jobs, for example, and supporting those who might have uh, uh, disputes with their employers, you know, and, you know, things, uh, things like that. It's a good idea. We started it at one point with the Muslim engineers. That was in the late 90s, I believe. Unfortunately, they wanted to expand more. They turned it into a national thing. They became known as the Arab professionals. And when it became like that, many non-Muslim Arabs joined it. <clears throat> Lebanese and Egyptians and other things like that. Then they elected the non-Muslim you know, president for it, and <laughs> we lost it, <laughs> basically. Uh, I think that it, it's better to limit it to Muslims and locally to Muslims in, you know, South Florida, if we want, you know, to have something that uh, has to do with our, uh, with our community down here. Right. These are just two things that uh, come to my mind that we can uh, work on. Again, we need somebody uh, who's a professional and who is willing to organize <clears throat> to have the team building skills and the activity and the time uh, in order to form this kind of uh, uh, union for Muslim uh, professionals. I am sure that you also have ideas um, as members of our community that you can uh, uh, share with us. Let me stop here and give you the next 15 minutes or so to see if you have any comment or you have any question or if you have any, uh, any suggestions. Barakallah fikum and thank you. Anybody who has a comment or has a suggestion about things that we can do to bring our community together to... Uh, yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here, to be honest. I don't really have as much as a suggestion, as much as the idea of incentivizing people to come to the masjid. Personally, I feel that maybe incentive incentivizing uh, people coming to the masjid might form some sort of superficial community where um, the main reason they go is for the incentive and not to actually perform prayers or to actually do acts of ibadah specifically. On the other hand, it could also expose people that are not typically used to coming to the masjid regularly for religious reasons or for ibadah to actually perform it and to get hooked. So um, personally, I feel I'm not really certain about the idea of incentivizing. I feel like I'm split between these two. However, I do feel that maybe incentivizing um, the community to come to the masjid might possibly form some sort of superficial community. I think, uh, that's just my thought. Barakallah. <clears throat> Some criticize churches <clears throat> for using tactics in order to uh, draw members and bring people to the church. Sometimes they have parties where they have musical uh, uh, parties and they bring singers and people dance, especially the young people in order to attract the young crowd. You know, they go to extremes, some churches, you know, in order to uh, invite that. Of course, we cannot do things uh, like that as Muslims. Uh, the, the incentive to come to the masjid is supposed to be to get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the niyyah that you're supposed to have in order to do that. But I have learned over years that there are, people are not angels. And there are people out there who might come the first time, the second time uh, for an incentive other than pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once they taste the sweetness of Iman and the sweetness of praying in the masjid and with the sweetness of being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being around uh, Muslims who have the same mindset and all doing the same thing, they have nothing in common but the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will bring, make them permanent members uh, who come for uh, prayers. So there is nothing wrong with 
uh, using incentives to uh, prank people. But these incentives, again, are not supposed to be haram, you know, in uh, themselves. When I say, for example, we want the senior clubs, those who are senior citizens, to start coming to the masjid to meet and talk, and uh, this is not a haram thing. This is something that Islam, uh, Islam encourages. But at the same time, it will uh, encourage them to come and, you know, uh, pray in the masjid. So I agree with you that, that uh, it should not become, uh, because there are people who come to Masarid and there are people who go to churches, not for prayers. You know, that is true. There are people, even in the past, uh, you know, the line of poetry that says, He prayed and he fasted in order to achieve a goal. Once he achieved it, he stopped praying and he stopped fasting. There are people who will pray so that they will fool others, you know, into believing that they are good and they are righteous. And then they will scam them financially, for example. There are people who are, you know, uh, like that. There are people who have a dirty uh, past and they have all kinds of bad records on them and they come to the masjid in order to make people think that they are good and in order to remove, you know, uh, such a thing. Even those are not criticizing them. Allah alam what they're you know, their intentions are, but uh, uh, prayers is an act of the heart before it is an act of the body. When you come to the masjid, you are supposed to be coming to the masjid because you want to be, become a better person and you want to strengthen your relationship, you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, Islam teaches us to give incentives while you're training somebody, like the hadith of Um Salama, uh, on how they used to encourage children to fast. She said, we used to make dolls for them with cotton and cloth, you know, so that they would play with them uh, to pass the time while they are <laughs> while they are fasting. And the Prophet ﷺ learned about it and he never told them, you know, that you are making them fast for the wrong reason. They wanted to fast to play with these dolls, you know, but this is a form of training. And people sometimes need, you know, such, uh, such a thing. If it does not become, like you said, the uh, reason or the main incentive why people come to the masjid. But other questions or other comments? Anybody else has any comment or any question about building our community or things that can uh, uh, strengthen our, uh, our community? Let me share this joke with you. I just heard before I came here in the news, Al Jazeera news. They were talking about a barman in Morocco. A barman, he has a bar. <laughs> and he was throwing, <laughs> throwing out French wine from the uh, shelves. And he was saying, for the love of the Prophet, والسلام, I will not sell French, <laughs> French wine in my, in my bar again. <laughs> As if uh, giving people Russian uh, wine or uh, locally made wine is halal. You know, or that is acceptable. But that tells you that the love of the Prophet والسلام, is so strong and deep in the hearts of Muslims, even those who are uh, sinning and those who do not pray and those who are away, still, when it comes to harming their feelings by attacking the Prophet والسلام, still they will have some iman, you know, in them that will uh, come up, you know, at times uh, like that. You know the story of the man who used to be one of the Sahaba. Uh, who used to be brought to the Prophet والسلام, to apply on him the penalty for drinking alcohol. And one of the Sahaba, seeing him coming all the time and being lashed, you know, for drinking, he cursed them or he said, criticized them with some words, saying every time they bring you here, don't you, you know, repent. And the Prophet والسلام, told that Sahabi not to harm his feelings because he said, this man, he loves Allah and his messenger. Even though he drinks and he, you know, he does, uh, he does a sin, but he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he loves his messenger. So do not say, you know, anything uh, uh, bad about him. You know, it's it's, it's uh, so just something that came to my mind when I saw the uh, news uh, from that barman. Type other questions or other comments. As you know, next week, uh, we're going to change the time. As a matter of fact, on Sunday, we're going to change uh, our time. Uh, if you want, we can continue. And I think this is what we suggested last time. Continue to meet at seven. Seven will become after Isha instead of after Maghrib. Uh, I think Maghrib will be 6.40. Isha will be uh, 5.40. I'm sorry for Maghrib. And Isha will be 6.45. So by seven, I am done with the Isha prayers. We can 
have a one hour, a one hour uh, Zoom session uh, from seven until eight on Friday. Is that if that is fine with you? We'll keep it uh, at seven o'clock, inshallah. If you have other suggestions also about the time uh, that you want to change, I'm willing to listen to you. Hi, anybody has anything else to say? Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, uh, I have a suggestion regarding um, surveys. I've been seeing lately that there have been surveys and there have been positive responses that don't typically show up when uh, during the Zoom sessions. So I would suggest um, specifically about what people think is their reason for not being able to come to the masjid. It could be a reason that um, we're not aware of and it could be different reasons. So I would suggest to have a survey sent out to people um, regarding what is, what is the main reason that prevents you to come to the masjid regularly? If, uh, or um, what is the main reason that gets you to the masjid regularly? And what is the main reason that prevents you from getting the masjid regularly? Well, uh, and the way that we can use it as knowledge to build upon. That's, uh, Jazakallah. Yes, Barakallah. Allah has told us that. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ Those who come to the masjid are who? Masajid are not for everybody. Masajid are for the elite. إنما يعمر أو في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال in houses that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has allowed to be erected in there you will find people praising Allah in the early morning and in the afternoon are men رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله that are not distracted by money and by business and by dunya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are these are the people who want yuriduna ayyatahharu, who want to purify themselves. So those who do not come are the ones who are lacking these qualities. It's that simple. Okay, the, the masajid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us not the masajid, this is common common sense. Who usually will go to uh, uh, natural food stores, those who are health conscious and those who want to avoid, uh, you know, uh, whatever diseases and problems that come with processed food and things like that. If they have, if they don't have that awareness, they will not go there. Uh, who usually will go for bars? People who like to drink, you know, because they will find what they want in these places. Now, what do we have in Masajid? What is there in Masajid? Prayers and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reading of uh, 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 the Quran. So uh, now, of course, if you ask people, why don't you come to the masjid? They're going to come up with all kinds of, you know, uh, excuses and all kinds of uh, reasons. But Allah told you the real reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you that the masjid are for those people who know their priorities. Their priorities is that they want to do their salah in the masjid because to them salah in the masjid is a very important thing. It's more important than their business, so they're willing to close their business in order to come, you know, to the masjid. It's more important than play and games and wasting time. You know, that's why they will quit everything that they are doing and they will come to the masjid. If somebody doesn't have this awareness and prayer to him is just something that he will do in his spare time, you know, whatever. Sometimes even collect all the prayers at the end of the night and before he sleeps, he will do the five prayers and then he will go to sleep. And there are people who do not pray to start with. You know, so these people, you know, they will not, uh, uh, you know, come to the masjid because they do not, uh, they do not pray. Uh, this is a, a, a phenomenon that uh, uh, has is the product of the materialistic culture. We have been overwhelmed, dunya akletna, like we say in Arabic, that dunya has eaten, swallowed us. Basically, it made us forget ourselves, forget our children, forget our future, forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, there are people who will go to their work at six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning, sometimes haram work, and they will stay there until 12 at night or one after midnight, you know, without paying attention to, without, without listening to a word of Quran, for example, or doing a prayer or listening to all they listen is, you know, bad and foul language, you know, from uh, uh, their customers and their, that's all that they're listening to for 12 hours, 13 hours, 14 hours, you know, that this, and then they go home and they eat and they sleep, you know, for eight hours and they get up and they go back to their work just like that. 
And if you ask these people, now what are you trying to accomplish by doing what you are doing, killing yourself and you know, burying yourself alive, basically, you know, and they will tell you it's the, the love of money. I want to be rich. I want to have money. It's unfortunately, so many people do not understand how to live their lives, how to have a balanced, uh, a balanced life. They do not value things right. They value money only. The only thing that is important to them in life is money. And when you have people who are dominated by such, uh, you know, a culture, you know, the story of Abu Huraira, when he went to the marketplace and told the people who are arguing to, you know, uh, earn a dollar, you're fighting over a dollar here and the inheritance of the Prophet is being distributed in the masjid. They quit everything and they went running to the masjid, thinking that, oh, I can get the sword of the Prophet or the shoes of the Prophet and sell them and become a millionaire. When they got there, they found nothing. They found people praying and people reading the Quran and people making istighfar. So they told Abu Huraira, you fooled us. You told us that there is inheritance here being divided. He told them, this is the inheritance of the Prophet. What do you think the Prophet والسلام, has left for you? This and this is the real value is more important than what you are fighting over. So it's I, I think the answer is known. But I don't think that anybody, we humans are arrogant and we, we deny the truth. We don't like to say the truth. So if you ask anybody, why don't you come to the Masjid? He will give you a hundred reasons. And he will never tell you it is because I prefer dunya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will not tell you it is because of lack of religiousness or lack of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or la lack of love for the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hardly you will find anybody who will tell you that. Five, I think I have a, a written comment here as well. Let me see. I agree with you, Sheikh. However, many ladies stopped coming because of the drama in the women <clears throat> in the women's committee. I know a number of women that are originals if the Islamic Center, maybe means in the Islamic Center, and they have stopped coming uh, because of that reason. Whenever we have a problem, we're not supposed to quit. We are not supposed to run away from our problems, but we are supposed to face them bravely, you know, and deal with them uh, bravely. I tell you, for me, I, I have faced so many problems over the years, and I, I went through many ups and downs and many frustrations that many times I, you know, thought that I'm going to call it quits, I'm go find myself anything else to do, you know, and live the rest of my life instead of, uh, you know, uh, being in the middle of uh, uh, responsibility. Uh, like I am. But Alhamdulillah, I have, you know, over the years learned that uh, in the end things will get better. That if, if everybody who thinks that he can do something good quits because there are some bad people out there who are doing bad work, he's basically helping them. And he's basically playing into their hands. If you have good ideas, if you have uh, love for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have something good to benefit the community, you're supposed to stick around and you're supposed to uh, be part of the good, invite others to the good that you uh, uh, that you have. Now, the, uh, 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 every problem has a solution. Problems of committees, for example, the women's committee is supposed to be elected. You know, every, we're supposed to be having an election every year, you know, but the, uh, uh, if you think that you can help in the women activities, for example, why don't you become a candidate, you know, to the women's committee? And if people choose you, you know, you become a member. Um, and then you can uh, explain your point of view and you can uh, do whatever, you know, bring whatever projects and ideas uh, that you have in your head into being, you know, and benefit others. But to call it quits and to say, I'm going to stop uh, coming to the masjid because I do not like this person, because I do not like this policy, because I don't... If everybody who doesn't like something about, <laughs> about the place they don't go to, nobody will leave their homes, you know. But this is not how we think. We think that I am going to the masjid because I want to be a good Muslim. I want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to pray uh, my salah in a jama'ah. I want to learn and I want to grow in my, uh, in my religion. Are there going to be drawbacks and setbacks and there's going to be some... Uh, you know, um, problems and hindrances here and there. Yes, sure. Anything in life, any mission that you take in life, any uh, uh, task that you embark on, you're going to face difficulties and you're going to have problems. Don't quit. 
whatever it is, don't quit. Stick around because you are doing the right thing. And when you are doing the right thing, you are doing it because it is right. Not in order to please somebody or to uh, uh, displace somebody. Other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Five other, we have other comments here. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Uh, firstly, barakallah peak for telling the truth as is and not sugarcoating it. Um, secondly, um, uh, I wanted to see if some uh, a suggestion, a suggestion basically, is um, is it possible to have some sort of program that somehow increases the, since you already know and already told the reasons for why people do not come to the masjid. Could we have a program that overcomes this by having a program that uh, increases our spirituality, that uh, basically stuff like that, yeah. That's, that's my suggestion. Dawah. Dawah. That is the answer. And that is, inshallah ta'ala, we're thinking about new series you know because we are concluding basically building a community but in a community by the way needs more you know and we might revisit it again if if uh, uh, need comes but uh, the, the next series or the next topic is going to be da'wah because da'wah is uh, uh, is very important da'wah means to remind ourselves of our duties towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is the task of everybody every person is supposed to be a da'i inviter to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the da'wah is strong, if we have people who are committed to giving da'wah, you know, to uh, uh, to people, inshallah there will be a response. Al khayru fi fi ummati. Many people, if you remind them, you know, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will remember, you know, and if you remind them of their salah and you help them in the beginning, you know, to, uh, uh, to do that, inshallah ta'ala, they will become regular, uh, perform their prayers uh, uh, regularly. So the cure for the, this uh, uh, laziness, if you will, or this lack of interest in masajid is by uh, uh, establishing the uh, activities of da'wah to call to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a big subject. You can do da'wah with tazkir, you can do da'wah with ta'lim, you know, you can do da'wah with uh, 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 friendship, you can do da'wah with uh, activities and you know, and things like it's a big, uh, uh, a big subject. Like I told you, we can talk about that, inshallah ta'ala, in coming, uh, in coming weeks. But that is the only way because, with matters of religion, the goods that you are selling, the goods that you are selling, is the same goods, by the way, that the Prophet was selling. All of the Prophets came in order to sell this product. The product is what? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are marketing uh, uh, this good uh, to the people and you're supposed to be a good marketer, you know, to present it in the best way and the best manner uh, than you can. If each one of us perceives himself as a da'i, the father perceives him as a da'i, the mother perceives herself as a da'i, the neighbor perceives himself as a da'i to his neighbors, and everybody perceives himself as a da'i, uh, that will create more awareness of uh, our spirituality. And eventually it will lead to, uh, you know, people doing prayers, you know, more and attending messages more. But I think we have come to the conclusion of this session of uh, Zoom. Uh, this will conclude again, the uh, building a community. Again, I remind you that uh, don't think that we have built a community in these last five hours, or five sessions, we do not build a community like that. But this is just to raise our awareness of the importance of the group and the importance of the community and to spark some ideas, you know, into our uh, minds uh, so that we can, you know, we can think. We are uh, responsible for ourselves. We are responsible for our situation. <inaudible> that Allah will not change the circumstances of any people until they change it themselves. Do not await a Messiah or a Mahdi to come and change things for you. If you want to see a better community, be more involved, you know, in your community. Be more active, you know, in your uh, uh, in your community. When you are building a community, like I said before, you are building yourself as well. Barakallah feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Uh, thank you for sharing your uh, your thoughts uh, with us this evening. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaykum.